and welcome back we have a 2002 saturn sl1 now this repair is going to apply anywhere from the 96 models all the way up to 2002 okay so we're going to replace the rear trailing arm on this car it has completely snapped in half now it's weird because not too long ago I replaced the front stabilizer bar on this car and the way this car is designed, the front stabilizer bar kind of works as a uh, trailing arm. So that also snapped and obviously you can't get these parts brand new so I have to go to the junkyard to get one and I just think it's weird that these uh, critical suspension components are just uh, breaking on this car and you know, it's got me thinking is it this specific car because of uh i don't know it's rust it's age or is it just a common issue with these saturn sl1s so if you happen to have one of these vehicles i'd love to hear about it so just go ahead and leave a comment below okay so as you can see we have the car jacked up and i am using a jack stand and just for safety purposes i'm keeping the floor jack in the same place that i lifted up the car um be sure to always use a jack stand never rely on the floor jack they're not safe and here goes our broken uh, trailing arm right here. So it just snapped. And good old Rock Auto comes to the rescue once again. I love ordering stuff in this place. Uh, they usually seem to have what I need. So let's just go ahead and get this uh, part unboxed and make sure that everything is exactly the same and we did receive the correct part. Oh, and it looks like someone is getting fired at Rock Auto. Look at this, we got two magnets. Ah, the classic box inside of a box. All right, let's get this open. And right off the bat, it seems to be right. It looks like the right part. It's actually nice that it came with uh, new bushings. I didn't even uh, look at that when I was initially like buying the part. I didn't really look to see if it had new bushings, but uh, it's nice that it did come with them. And it's also a good deal that I was able to get it online because I didn't need the part immediately. You know, we could have definitely waited and we did. Um, yeah, but if you were to get this part from your local auto parts store, you're looking at about $110, maybe $120, something like that. And, you know, this one is... Uh, much cheaper let's just say that so <laughs> okay so let's start off by taking off these two fasteners right here now i was a little bit concerned about the amount of rust that was here but everything turned out to be okay so can't argue with that now this emergency brake cable that's attached to the trailing arm is just uh just sitting on there really you just have to pop it off and in my case it was just a rust kind of holding it in place but a little bit of a uh, persuasion it did come off and that's what the bracket looks like so now let's try to get this uh end out the, the rear knuckle it's uh just basically the bushings with the bolt and obviously this isn't working so i'm gonna have to try something else
And that did the trick. I guess the third time's the charm, right? So let's just go ahead and take these bushings off and just kind of look at it. To make sure uh, nothing is wrong with the knuckle. And, you know, so far it looks alright. I don't see it broken or anything like that. Uh, the trailing arm is definitely shot. You can even see how bad it was wearing down on the center shaft right there. So, eh, it's a good thing we got a new one. Just gonna go ahead and clean this up with a little bit of brake parts cleaner. Now these two fasteners, they're really uh, old and just crusty, but um, looking at them closely, it kind of looks like they did have some sort of red locker on them. So it's a good idea to put something back on them, and I am, I'm going to be using a blue thread locker. That's something to keep in mind, you definitely do not want these bolts to back out on you. And cleaning off the threads is always going to help. Okay, so when I initially put the trailing arm on, I put it through the rear knuckle right here and I put the bushing, the washer, and the nut on it. But when it came time to put the two bolts that go into the body, which would be right here, it was really fighting against me. So at this point, it's just best to put it through the rear knuckle, but don't worry about any of the bushings or the, the nut on it or anything. Just get all of this fastened up right here on the body first. Okay, so this part right here, I made it look a lot easier than it actually was. It took me a good amount of time to try to get this right. But, uh, yeah, I had to pull out the biggest channel locks that I have, and they really helped in this situation. I suppose if you have someone here to help you, they could pull on the knuckle while you put the bushing, the washer, and the nut on. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely not as easy as I made it look in the video. For some reason, I lost the footage where I was putting blue thread locker on this nut right here. But it does have it on there, so don't worry about that. And it would really help if I actually turned it on. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's set it. See, right here I have it set to 79 foot-pounds, which is, uh, I don't know why I thought that was a correct torque spec. I just didn't want to look again, and I was just being lazy. But as you can see, obviously I was off by a few pounds. It's not a big deal. Uh, I guess having a little bit tighter is better than a little bit loose, right? So, uh... Yeah, cut me some slack.
and that's pretty much it so i'm gonna put a photo up here with the before and after and there is a clear difference if you like the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you're considering subscribing don't forget to hit that notification bell and like always thanks for watching Ooh.